your scouting party has not returned, and half of the intruders escaped your guards. Sorry, mistress. We mucked up. Until their sanctuary is found, I will take something precious from you every hour that passes. A trinket, a tongue, a limb. I ain't no use without my limbs. The lad'll make the prisoner squeal soon enough. I swear. Silence now, creature. Or I will silence you forever. As she turns to you, her thoughts mingle with yours. A cold hand caressing your brain. The chamber melts away to reveal a dark, endless nowhere. In it, you see a vision. The drow listens as a pale-eyed young woman whispers in her ear. One of those the voice spoke of. One of the chosen. The vision fades away. A true soul in such a grotesque form. The Absolute has a place in her heart even for death here. Her heart is more generous than mine. Join my hunt, fairy, and obey me. This tribe is mine to command. If you have business here, then you report to me. You will join my hunt. They are servants of the Absolute. In sufficient numbers, they are an effective force. Expendable and willing. But they do not have the wits to lead this hunt with me. Do you? Worshippers of a false god. Their existence is an insult to the Absolute's claim on this region. There is a weapon the Absolute seeks. I'm sure those wretches have it hidden away there. We will find it amongst the dead and the ashes. Her excitement is palpable. She lingers on thoughts of victory, of unbelievers' blood spilled, and of the weapon. She will seize it in the Absolute's name. You suddenly feel a strange anxiety take hold. Not your own, but that of the Gith artifact you carry. Somehow, it's afraid you would tune your mind to it. The artifact does not want to part from you. It does not want to fall into the Absolute's clutches. The thief, whimpering in our dungeon, tried to flee to their sanctuary. We will continue to remove parts of him until he tells us exactly where it is. He's been resilient, but he'll talk. She is seeking the grove you visited. Already you feel her mind closing around yours. Speak, true soul. The hunt must begin soon. Tell me what you know. The Absolute will reward us with such power if we find this place. So close. Their fate is sealed, and you will be instrumental in the slaughter. Go to their refuge and make your way inside. As a friend. I will gather a raiding party and move into position. You will open the gates from the inside when the time is right to strike. We will cleanse the place of infidels and burn it to the ground in the Absolute's name. And then we will be the first among her favorites. The masterful painting she depicts of the massacre awakens you hungrily. Control yourself. You are as uncouth as the goblins. The slaughter at the grove will not begin until you have prepared the way. You must make your way inside. Once I am in position, on your signal, we break them. And when they are dead, the Absolute will reward your faith. As will I. For the Absolute. 
Wait, wait, bows down! Gods above, we took you for a goblin! Get up here! I want that gate sealed before they arrive. And we need to talk! Gods above, you're alive! A little light, just as the day seems darkest. I'd given you up for dead at the goblin camp. I'm damn glad to be wrong. But what happened? We've seen the massing in the woods. You led the drow here by the nine hells. Why? I don't... Oh, God. You've turned on us. Hells, why? Guards, guards, help! Splinter of ice works its way into your mind. The way is clear. Now we can cleanse this place completely. Kill everyone. A glorious day. The Absolute will be pleased. But there is more to be done. This place is home to druids. Root them out and kill them. Praise the Absolute. She will reward us well for this exquisite carnage. You are almost worthy to live among drow. Fairy. The true honor is to serve the Absolute. She loves you fiercely. I see that in the strength she has given you. And she has so much more to give. There is a bond between us, true soul. I can see what you are, what you want, and you can see what I want. Through her eyes, you see yourself, skin glistening with sweat, hands bound, ecstasy or terror, maybe both. You feel her breath on your neck, her fingers running down your spine, and then it is over. I will come to your camp tonight. We will celebrate this victory together. As you approach your camp, the raucous celebrations have already begun. The goblins praise the absolute, but their celebrations also honor their leaders, Minthara and you. You fought well, and so did these creatures, thanks to our leadership. When you tire of their company, come to me. Tonight, you are mine. She looks you up and down, her mind touches yours. You feel her hand at your neck, her lips closing around yours. Are you ready to give yourself to me? Good. I will join you when you go to your bed. You are mine. You are here. Good. Come with me. Her whole being is laid bare before you. And her 
half hidden at the center of her desire, you discover something unexpected. Fear. She flinches as layers of her psyche peel back, revealing the scars of a life spent anticipating a knife in the back. The memories of countless dead slain too soon. Not just enemies, but family, friends, lovers. Speak to me. Tell me what is in your heart. No. I want the truth. I want to hear it in your voice, not in my mind. I could say the same of you. There is something about you that disturbs me. The moment we were alone together, something changed. I felt it, and you must have felt it too. The Absolute fell silent. How is that possible? The artifact pulses softly, sending out a warning. It is a friend. This is blasphemy. But... So much that has happened since I left the Underdark is like a dream of somebody else's life. I do not know myself anymore, except tonight. Tonight, I wanted this for myself. I must pray, and you must rest. Tomorrow, we will have fresh orders. stand over yourself as you sleep. A knife in your hand, murder in your heart. You are ready to strike, to end your own life. But then a shock runs through your mind. This is no dream. Wake up, Trousseau. We must talk. I watched over you as you slept, peaceful and silent. And I spoke to our God. I asked her why she had chosen you, made you one of her faithful, when you are so clearly broken. Beautiful, but broken. There is something missing in you. And I do not understand it. When the Absolute failed to answer me, I feared that you had somehow infected me with that same absence. And so I decided that you must die. But then, a miracle happened. As I took out my blade, her voice returned to me. And she told me what I must do to purge myself of doubt. She told me to decide your fate. To determine if you are worthy. If you are. I am to send you into her embrace, at the seat of her power. In time, I believe we may be together. Travel to Moonrise. We will meet again there, at the heart of the Absolute's power. to gather our forces in this region. They're ill-disciplined. Without a strong hand, they'll disperse. I know a way, yes. Soon, you will be in the Absolute's presence. She will test you. If you fail, you will break. If your faith is strong, you will become something even more beautiful. 
with difficulty, but I can help. The land around Moonrise is cursed. Traveling there will sap your strength and your sanity, but I can protect you. A wretched creature in my service can guide you through the curse. This harp will summon him. Play it when you are in the shadows and he will come to you and know that you are a friend. He was a drow once. Now he is an abomination, a victim of Lolth's cruelty. His minions will wait for you at the mountain pass on the threshold of the Shadow Curse. I warn you, he is quite mad, but he knows the path to Moonrise better than anyone. Go to him when you are ready. I will lead what remains of my forces to Moonrise ahead of you. <laughs> when we next meet, we will be together in the Absolute's presence, and she will make us her champions. I will not be slandered! General, you saw my reports. You know it's not my fault. The facts suggest otherwise. You were ordered to retrieve the artifact. You failed to do so. If I had been given drow warriors instead of goblin trash. Oi, what? You scrag! Enough! A blast of mental energy washes over you, filling the room. Your tadpoles and worms urging you to obey. Let me make sure I understand this. You're claiming that General Thorm gave you the wrong soldiers. Yes. No! You blame the Absolutes chosen for your failure. Of course it is not the General's fault. Whose then? Zarel's mind is a steel trap, but you cautiously ease your way in. You just need to shift her focus a little. I'm being unkind. Anyone might have struggled with such imperfect tools. Goblins are prone to failure. Yes. It's the goblins' fault. They failed you, General. Not me. General? Take Minthara below. Someone will have to consider her fate. No! Please! Mercy! Please! <laughs> bye bye, princess. You were adored, Minthara. Brought up from the darkness and into the absolute light. She cherished you, but it wasn't enough. You were distracted by your own desires. Bloodlust, murder, chaos, and most damning of all, an unexpected weakness, a longing for acceptance and affection from a mortal. You have no right! We have every right. You are nothing. Minthara's mind connects with yours. Not strong as you remember it, but fractured, disintegrating. Come to observe, true soul. She is a lesson. None can rise so high that they cannot fall again. We are erasing her. Yes, your authority is great. We can learn, watching you break what little remains of her mind. Are you quite mad? Or maybe defective? You won't break us. And you won't leave here alive. I expected to be greeted as a hero. But the wretches imprisoned me and tried to tear my mind apart. I didn't think anyone would come for me. Erasing my thoughts and my will. Even I could not have endured for much longer. Agreed. 
Lead the way. Minthara is supposed to be in a cell. You have some explaining to avoid a fight this time. But bullying your way out of Moonrise is a risky proposition. I would have preferred to bleed them. I last left Moonrise as a commander in the Absolute's army, obeying the voice of a god. I thought I had found a home and a purpose. Now I leave as an exile. But you risked your life to rescue me. For that, I am grateful. The artifact connects with her, pulling your minds together and showing her all that you have seen. The prism, your dream visitor, the protection that keeps you from obeying the absolute and becoming a lithid. She knows it all in a moment. Her mind reels, but is no longer clouded. She accepts the truth. She has no choice. There is much we must discuss. Do you have a safe place to camp nearby? Goodbye for now. I will see you soon. It does not compare with the comforts of home, but your camp is almost palatial in comparison to my previous accommodation. Thank you for allowing me to come here and for bringing me back to myself. Each memory that returns to me is more disturbing than the last. The things that I did in the name of the Absolute, the things that were done to me, they broke my mind. Precisely. While our tadpoles live, and the cult have the means to control them, we will never be safe. We must eradicate them, starting with General Thorm. I mean, Ketherick. My deference to him is a habit that will die hard, I fear. All that live can die. I can help you plot Ketherick's demise, but I need something from you first. Swear that you will keep me close. Until the Absolute is dead, at least. Thank you. I knew you were different to other true souls when we lay together. Now I know it was the prism that silenced the Absolute in those moments, not you. But it was not the prism that held me and touched my mind and body. That was you. For now, we will travel together and fight together. In time, perhaps we will lie together again. Kind words do not always come easily to me. Her entire being joins with you for a moment, and you see all that she is. Dangerous, cunning, wounded, brutal, paranoid, and utterly loyal to those she trusts. And you have earned that trust, along with a small measure of her affection. It is a rare thing, well hidden in the cold fortress of her mind. And it is precious. Together, we can have our vengeance on those who infected us. Rest well, and keep your wits about you. Tomorrow, we go to war with the Cult of the Absolute. General Thorm would have the world believe that his invulnerability is a gift from the Absolute. That is a lie intended to impress those who flock to the cult's cause, and to strike fear in the minds of those who stand against the Absolute. I believe Thorm draws his power not from a divine source, but an arcane one. I suspect it is the very relic that Balthazar has been sent to retrieve. We must find the Necromancer and claim what he seeks, or destroy it. Now, 
Rest. We will need our strength for what lies ahead. I would gladly join you in the fight. Leave one of your other allies here, and I shall. You wish to consult me? I was the Absolute's dagger. I remember every throat that it held me to, and every drop of blood it forced me to spill. I take no responsibility for the lives I took. I did nothing in the Absolute's name. I was merely a weapon that it wielded. The Absolute. They work together like a drug. I did not feel I was compelled to act against my will. I felt ecstatic to serve. Every action seemed a deliberate choice. The best choice. Even though I could no more have resisted its commands than flesh can resist decay. Even rational minds like ours cannot reject such a powerful influence. The Absolute and make the impossible seem inevitable. I took up my oath long ago, when I swore bloody vengeance against any who defied Loth. Now I myself have sinned against the Spider Queen. Though my faith is shattered, my oath endures. I am sworn to destroy all those who serve the Absolute. It is not noble, it is necessary. If we do not destroy the cultists, they will destroy everything. We are all that stands between this world and annihilation. I fought at his side once, shortly after my conversion. Before the battle, he was everything a general should be. A charismatic leader with a brilliant strategic mind. And when the fighting began, he led his troops from the front and cut through the enemy like a scythe through stalks. Blows and arrows rained down on him, and before long, his face was a mask of blood, but he did not fall. He did not even falter. When we won the day, Ketherick's armor was bent and shattered, but his flesh was unmarked. I have lived long enough to know that few things are impossible in this world. Catherick's power is a rare thing, though. I have never seen its like. The necromancer Balthazar is Catherick's chief advisor. One who has mastery over the dead may well be able to help the living cheat it. He is usually in his laboratory, <laughs> elbow deep in offal, or clinging to his master's side. If he left Moonrise, his mission must be urgent. We should ransack his chambers and see what secrets he keeps for the great general. A disparate collection of vagabonds and strays. Did you have anyone particular in mind? It would have been better for us had she embraced Shah and claimed the power of the goddess. But it is better for Shadowheart to be free of that poisonous influence. The Night Singer has some admirable qualities. Far more than her insipid sister. But her followers are repressed. Take the child Shadowheart. She does not even know who she is but still manages to pity herself. The very concept of Sharon worship is self-indulgent. They would have you think every whispered word and hidden thought is of value, but it is not so. 
I have performed a thousand interrogations, squeezing out the most guarded secrets held in heart, mind, and soul. I can tell you this. When the trivial parts have been whittled away and I have sifted through what remains, in most cases, a person amounts to nothing at all. He's been deprived of freedom and strong blood for so long that he is addicted to both. While those addictions have their hold on him, he is still a slave. <laughs> no. He is well aware that I would exsanguinate him entirely if he flashed his fangs at me. does he have that does not involve his master? He fears him, he hates him, he dreams of him, and he will either kill him or die trying. Astarian is no more free of Cazador than you or I are free of our tadpoles. He will only be free when Cazador is dead, and that is as it should be. When the time comes, we must hope that he does not only take Cazador's long life, but the power that has sustained him as well. I have encountered few Githyanki in my life. Those that I did were raiders. They croaked out pleas for mercy in their alien tongue as they died. Meeting Lazel makes me wish I knew more of their culture. To one who only sees the surface of things, perhaps. You should look deeper. There is a fanaticism in the Loth Swarm that lends itself to chaos. They turn their blades on one another as readily as on outsiders. The Gith have stricter hierarchies and stronger commitment to a single cause. Some, like Lazelle, question that cause. But even so, she retains the discipline of her training. <laughs> the wizard? No. It is pointless. In my experience, the moment they leave their libraries, wizards have the life expectancy of a gnome in a war. Either the enemy recognizes they are a threat and kills them swiftly, or their curiosity leads them to combust while experimenting with the limits of magic. Our wizard is already in a state of suspended combustion, thanks to that orb between his ribs. <laughs> I suspect it is only a matter of time before he goes up in smoke. I will reserve my social graces for those who might live long enough to appreciate them. Then speak. Not directly. My memories were not removed. They were obscured by the Absolute's voice, by its presence. The tadpole is a conduit for that voice, not its origin. And while the prism protects us, the Absolute cannot reach us. As for the tadpoles themselves, for the moment, I do not believe they are malevolent. They are incubating within our brain matter, not feeding on it. Is there a reason you chose me as your confidant in this matter? As you should. But I am not sure that I can trust you. There are those within Menza Baranzan that we call Kalith Karthan, those driven by blood. They are the mad, lost to all reason, and subservient to nobody. Even Lolth, malicious and brutal as she is, cannot abide them. They kill, and cannot say why. So they are destroyed for the greater good. When you speak to me of yearning and urges to kill, I fear you are like them, controlled by a bloodlust that you do not comprehend.
Killing is necessary. It is good that you can take pleasure in it. Just be sure that your urges do not lead you astray. We have enemies enough for you to sate your lusts on. We do not need to make more because you indulge your every murderous whim. As you approach Minthara, you feel her mind reaching out to yours, tentative and curious. Then it retreats, soft as a whisper. Sorry, old habits. I did not ask permission. When we first met, before Moonrise, I intruded on your thoughts without hesitation and took what I needed from your memories. I would not do that again, unless I had reason to think you were hiding something from me. And I do not. I did not think we would ever share anything more than an uneasy alliance, born of our mutual enmity for the Absolute. I was wrong. A deeper bond has grown between us. I trust you. But I would like to touch your thoughts again. Now that my mind is my own. May I? Curiosity. Until my time in the Cult of the Absolute, I had spent little time on the surface, except to raid and pillage. I did not expect to find any outside the Underdark who saw the world as I do, and wanted from the world what I want. I did not expect you. I have been told that I am special since my mother first held me in her arms. The burden of expectation. Before the Absolute, I lived a life of certainties. I knew that I was destined for greatness because I was born to it. I also knew that my inherited privilege came with a cost, that the bonds of fellowship and family could be broken by envy and ambition. I could not enjoy the taste of food for fear of poisoning, and I could not enjoy the company of lovers and friends because I feared they hid knives behind their smiles. In spite of the danger, I was happy. I knew myself, and I understood the world around me. Now, nothing is certain. Without Lolth, without the Absolute, without my home, I do not know myself. But you do, I think. Show me myself through your eyes. Let me see what I am to you. She joins her thoughts with yours, and you are as one. You share in her strength of mind and formidable will, but also the doubts that eat at her conviction. Those doubts cluster in swarms, and the thickest is around her sense of self. She pushes past, revealing the image of her you hold in your mind. What does she see? The cold shell of Minthara's mind melts away, and you are drawn into the heart of her. Warm, passionate, and dangerous. I have never lacked confidence, but this conflict seems so much bigger than the two of us. It frightens me. I do not know if we will survive it. But whatever life remains to us, I would gladly spend it fighting at your side and lying with you at night. Her mind touches yours, feather light and hesitant, a stark contrast to the confidence with which her thoughts intruded on yours in the past. Tonight, there will be no voices, no orders, no gods. I belong only to you. You dare show yourself here after all you've done? You have betrayed me. You have betrayed General Thorm. You have betrayed our god! And for what? That little firefly buzzing around overhead? I'll crush you first, then her, and in death, you will all serve the Absolute. I will never serve the Absolute again, Israel. And I will take your prattling tongue as a reminder of this moment. 
Where's the fun in that? Boys, make this traitor bleed. I will never tire of sitting on dead men's thrones. My blood ran hot when we broke Ketherick's bones together. But we have greater challenges ahead of us. It is clear now that he was not working alone. During my time in the cult, I came to know one of his co-conspirators all too well. Baal's blood letter. Orin. To think, I thought her to be speaking for the Absolute. I worshipped that woman. Jealous? You needn't be. When Orin is in my hands, her agony will nourish me. She is the Iblis who indoctrinated me with the Absolute's lies. When I first visited Moonrise, I stood before the Absolute in awe. It was more of an idea than an entity. Pure love. Total power. Orin was by my side. She told me that God had chosen me to be a true soul. Blessed and adored. Now I know that those memories are lies. There was no God. Orin held me down in a cocoon of flesh, while a mind flayer forced a parasite into my brain. And she laughed at my fear. I will find her. I will murder her. And I will smile. It is as if you read my mind. Perhaps you did. In killing Catherick, we fractured the cult's leadership. When we break the other Chosen and claim their Netherstones, we can take control. I expected you would be, but know this. What I propose is nigh on impossible, but if anyone can succeed, it is us. We have the prism, and we have the courage to slay gods. We may fail, but we must try. The power of the enslaved Elder Brain could reshape the world. We could reshape the world. And then we will need no gods. We will be their equal. We will be absolute. We have a purpose and a bond. By my oath, I will fight with you while that purpose holds. There is yet one thing about you that troubles me, though. Something I need you to explain. When we killed the tieflings at the Grove, I was not in control of my actions. You do not have that excuse. So I ask you, why? Why kill them? A wise ploy, and it was successful to an extent. We did not find a cure, but we found our purpose. I am satisfied. Now, I am ready to leave this damned place whenever you give the word. The city awaits. You wish to consult me? I take no pleasure in his passing. Whatever faults he may have had, Ketherick was a great leader. Of course. He ruled Moonrise for centuries. That in itself deserves respect. I believe he was an honorable man, but the gods used him as their plaything. First, Shah and her sister, then the three behind the Absolute. I sympathize.
It is a sharp mind that feels sympathy for one who suffers unnecessarily, not a soft heart. I saw strength in Ketherick that had been diluted by pain, but I will never forgive him for handing me to Orin. For that, <laughs> I hope Merkel hollows out his bones and lets them be dust. A true soul came to my city preaching a message of togetherness, accompanied by two novices. Menzo Baranzen is not fertile ground for such messages. I killed them and hanged their bodies in my garden. I would have picked prettier corpses if my intentions had been aesthetic. This was a warning against heresy. I was not content with the warning, though. I intended to wage war on their insolent god and the rest of its followers. Even as the flesh sagged and sloughed away from their eyeless skulls, their audacity infuriated me. I had to know where they came from. <sighs> and whoever sent them was counting on my curiosity overcoming my caution. Yes. All it took was a simple act of necromancy, and the corpses told me where I needed to strike. Moonrise Towers. It is never safe to point out my shortcomings, Iblith. But in this instance, you are correct. Moonrise is the site of my greatest failure, as it turned out to my shame. I was defeated without even drawing my weapon. I came to Moonrise with a retinue of warriors and assassins, the best House Bane Ray had to offer. I expected a battle, but found a fully laden feast table and a welcome befitting a house matron. <sighs> Ketherick expected us, expected me, and I fell for his flattery. Perhaps I deserved what came after the welcome as well. Ketherick proposed an alliance between Moonrise and Menzo Baranzen. I admit I was captivated by him. He invited me to the head of his table as his guest of honor. I was wary, of course. If I had been in his position, the food would have been poisoned. It was not the food I should have been wary of. It was the pale woman at the foot of the table, Orin the Red. We had barely begun to eat when she spoke for the first time. I only caught one word, my name. Then, quick as lightning, she climbed onto the table, a dagger in each hand, and skipped toward me, slicing the throats out of my men as she passed them. Few things frighten me. Orin is one of them. Ketherick held me still, his hand on my shoulder, the grip tight enough to crack the bone. When Orin stood before me, she touched the dagger to my eye, drawing out a tear of blood. I want this one, she said. Ketherick nodded his permission and I was taken below. You've seen the horrors of the colony. Orin kept me there for days. She forced me to watch as my men were processed. Some for food, others as thralls. And then she placed the tadpole in my eye herself. That is certain. You know the rest as well as I do. There were massacres before the Grove. Religious communities, mostly. Those who refused to convert. Then there was you, and now there is freedom. 
Soon there will be vengeance. The next urchin that tries to pick my pocket will lose its hand. Half of the children here are already mutilated by poverty and starvation. Huh. I am reminded of the Brayrin, the stench streets of Menza Baranzen, where the sick and the outlawed make their homes. Despite the destitution, there is profit and opportunity to be found in such places, if one is willing to wade through the squalor. Yes, I only know it through history books and hearsay. A city of murder and grief. I expect it will live up to its legend. From the still dark waters of Lake Donegarten to the black academies of Tearbresh, it is a city of wonders and terror. But it is not my home anymore. If I were to return, I would be denied all of its wonders and shown only the terror. I am a daughter of Menza Baranzan's most ancient and powerful house, the Bainre. I lived a life of privilege and danger. My home was at the tallest point of Kuel Arzol, the place of the nobles, a plateau high above the city's sprawl. I enjoyed every luxury, whether harvested in the Underdark or stolen from the surface, and I survived my first assassination attempt while I still suckled at my mother's breast. I tasted her blood that day. She covered my body with her own, and a blade bit deep into her chest, almost puncturing her heart. When I came of age, she tried to take my life herself, and I gave her fresh scars to match those she earned protecting me. I expect so. If the world were to end, I think my mother would survive to rule over the ruins. Yes. My house trained me to be a soldier in Loth's service, and my mother showed me how to survive the perils of society. She taught me to be resilient and to guard my heart from those who cannot be trusted, literally and figuratively. When I choose to let somebody close, I do not do so lightly. That gives a great depth of meaning to the bonds I do share. I do not understand why the matrons, sorry, patriarchs of the city do not open their gates to the refugees. I was not suggesting they be allowed to roam free. They should be put to work. The city needs laborers and fodder to protect it. Yes. And if they work hard enough for long enough, the city might allow them to earn their freedom one day. This city of stone and steel is an endless scream in nature's womb. I have felt no peace here, until now. Your eyes, Stira. There is pain, endless and deep, but also devotion, blazing like the sun. You're in love, are you not? You are wise to admit it. When it comes to love, Vulnerability is armor, truth a sword, and trust a shield. I pray you wield all three, Stira. Bring the one you love to me. I will look into your hearts and see if your love is eternal or doomed eternally. I know my heart. And yours 
better than this creature ever will. But we can indulge it if you wish. Close your eyes, little ones. Be still as stone to earth. And remember to breathe. between you, so tender, so fragile, but do you see it for yourselves? Min Thara, a mask of ice hides a heart of pure fire. You do well to call her close. Listen, think. What does the drow miss most about the Underdark? It is true. Surface food lacks flavor. House Bane Ray banquets were legendary. Hear how your bond thrums with pleasure. Strong, vital, pulsing with affection. Many pass through our lives, their touch rippling across time. But who does Minthara admire the most? <laughs> Presumptuous! But not inaccurate. You have earned my companionship. That is no easy task. The sweetest loves dance lightly on the tongue. But now we must dig deeper. Into the most painful reaches of the spirit. Those with an icy facade hide their true selves well. But pain breaks us all in the end. What is the worst thing your love has ever done? I do not know what weakness of mine allowed them to take me. That haunts me more than anything they did to me. You know my heart, and I am glad. You are the first. How close you are. Two hearts beating a perfect rhythm. But I know the truth. Only one face haunts your dreams each night. Close your eyes, sweetness, and she will come to you. It. Come crawling home, hands stained with the bone lord's soot. And you carry his stone. You waste time soft soothing these flesh bags for the knife. I could end it now. But I'll be patient. Father will see us together again. He will see you bleed. While she lives, Orin will continue to terrorize us, and soon she will make good on her threats. She thinks we are weak, afraid, vulnerable. We need to prove her wrong. I am not on edge. I am alert, as you should be too. Orin could be anywhere, could be anyone, 
Despite her protestations to the contrary, it is clear that Minthara is afraid. If you sense my fear, be sure that she does too. It is her greatest weapon. She has the scent of our blood, and she will tease and toy until she tires of the hunt. Then she will obliterate us without a second thought. She had me in her clutches once before. Promise that you won't let it happen again. Thank you. Together, we will survive her. Against Orin? I have my doubts. We need to watch over each other. Now, more than ever. You wish to consult me? Tell me, Usno. Or show me. My mind is open to you. Exposed to the limitless horror of your dreadful imagination, Minthara's mind buckles, snaps, and then burns hot. She absorbs every detail, whether memory or dream, and drinks deep of them. You sense a desire in her equal in strength to your darkest urge. Elgor. Duktak. Slayer. There are many names for you, my love, and all of them inspire dread. You are exquisite. Ecstatically so. It makes my heart race. I know. We must find the Temple of Baal, slaughter Orin and claim your inheritance. Then I will rule by your side, my slayer. Your past is revealed to us, Chosen of Baal. How does it feel to know who you truly are? Good. We will both have our vengeance on Orin. All that we need argue about is which one of us has the pleasure of opening her throat. Once she is dead, we can seize control not only of the Temple of Baal, but the Cult of the Absolute as well. You helped to create this conspiracy. That means you may be the best person to help us control it. And the key to our victory. You wish to consult me? He is the only authority figure in Baldur's Gate worth a damn. Even as the Elder Brain tears at the foundations of the city, he stands strong and looks for solutions. Better for us to be a solution rather than a problem for his steel watch to scrape off the street. I am glad you recognized the benefits of that approach. If he proves troublesome, we can always kill him later when his guard is down. He is rather fond of himself. If he truly intends to be the savior of Baldur's Gate, perhaps he has reason to be. True. His mistake was choosing the wrong allies. Ketherick was reliant on his god instead of his own strength, and Orin does not understand power and control. Only blood. I am reluctant to share power, but if he is amenable to it, an alliance with Gortash may be beneficial. Together, we can teach this city to fear us, and that is just the beginning. When we have all three Netherstones and control the Elder Brain, all of Faerun will have reason to fear us. My, my. I can tell you are a special one from a single glance. You have but to ask, and we can grant you a moment of pleasure. Don't be shy. 
<laughs> what do you think, silly? Love, of course. Hot and vulgar with me, or <laughs> sweet and sincere with my sister. Trust me, you don't want to miss my signature Mezoberanzan love trick. And is that your partner with you? What a gorgeous couple. Perhaps we could come to an agreement. We are twins. We can make up a little show of kissing each other, but when we are hired at the same time, there are often many other clients in the room to attend to. <laughs> we want both of you, silly, at the same time. I don't like to share. Lay a finger on them, and I'll cut you. <laughs> I was talking about cutting you. Hard to believe she is dead. After all that she did to me. I do not often doubt myself. But surviving Orin took courage and strength I was not sure I had. I could not have faced her without you. You are trying to raise my spirits. I appreciate it, but any joy the sight of Orin's corpse brings me is but a speck of comforting shade. There is little relief to be found from the heat of the storm we are caught in. While the brain is still free and we are still infected, we will never be safe. But we can talk of this later. For now, let us be glad that we still draw breath and that Orin does not. You have resisted such a fate so far, and this would be a complete evolution. And you will be an illithid for the rest of your days. Is this really something you would be willing to accept? Do not take this step without consulting me. You decide all of our fates. To become a Mind Flayer while retaining your sense of self would not be a sacrifice. It would be an evolution. Embracing your illithid self may give us the greatest chance of dominating the brain and taking control. Does your blood sing as mine does, my love? There is no time for words. Let us join the battle. No. If this is to be our end, we will die together. But do not think of endings. Think of the glorious battle to come and rejoice that we have a part in it. We are in the midst of a battle against a being that can kill worlds with a thought. And we are still standing. <sighs> I am faring exceptionally well, given the circumstances. I know that we can. If you have doubts, rid yourself of them. They are infectious. The brain is on the cusp of its final thought and it's taking all of the Emperor's strength to keep it there. An opportunity, perhaps. This is the moment, my love. The moment in which we make a new world for ourselves. It is done. The absolute eradicated. Vengeance exacted. We are free. No more gods or monsters, except those of our own making. The Githyanki leave at last. I feared they would make this world their own. I'm sure Mistra will summon me soon enough, but until then, I propose we celebrate our victory the mortal way, with a drink in our hands and reckless abandon in our hearts. That's the wisest idea the wizards had yet. 
What say you? I think we deserve a drink to celebrate surviving that horror. I agree. We should claim whatever's left of the elf song as spoils and drink it dry. By rights, half the city belongs to us. I will not be joining you. I fear my presence will be no more welcome in the streets of the city than it ever was. If Baldur's Gate is too foolish to recognize its saviors, so be it. The city will miss your influence, as will I. I will miss you, too. Why leave? Baldur's Gate will be desperate for new leadership. And who better than us to lend our assistance? So many have fallen on both sides of this conflict. Once I would have died proudly in defense of the Netherbrain, thinking it a god. <sighs> it is a sobering thought, and I intend to chase it away with whatever filth passes for wine in these parts. The world wakes to a new dawn. And we are here to greet it, not as conquerors, but as saviors. Why did you not? We deserved to rule. But despite everything we gave up when we destroyed the brain, it is good to be here with you. Perhaps now we can make our own destiny. Yes, I would like that. No more gods or monsters, no devils or demons to manipulate our fate. We reclaimed our freedom, though everything was against us. What would you do with it? Yes, that would be good. I'm sure my mother has missed me. She likes competition. We can put the Gondians back to work, rebuild the Steel Watch, and march on the Underdark with an unstoppable army at our back, and a song of conquest on our lips. It will be a glorious homecoming, and you will make a beautiful queen. My name belongs to my mother. So our house will have a new name, your name, and the world will learn to fear it. But we can look to the future tomorrow or the day after. Today, let us think only of ourselves in this moment. We have won a lifetime together. In the six months since the Netherbrain fell, you and Minthara have set so many schemes in motion that it is hard to keep track of them. They are all interwoven to create one grand plot, ensuring everyone of importance in the city owes you a favor, a debt, or their life. Minthara is happier here than you could ever have imagined, and she fully intends to rule the city one day from the shadows, with you at her side. But now you must leave, not on a matter of business or intrigue, but for pleasure. The allies who stood with you against the Absolute are gathering, and you are invited. Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more Thou shouldst take care to preserve it. It is a great weapon wielded in the hand of good. 
go. Know one another once more. Yes, my love. Are you done talking to your friends? Can we leave? I think not. They may respect me or fear me, but I do not think they like me. It is the only thing. Let us finish our socializing and be done. In truth, I have never enjoyed parties. Although they do present the perfect opportunity for a poisoning. Taste my lips. They are already laced with toxins. None shall be spared tonight, not even you. Now go. Mingle, carouse, indulge. Tomorrow we return to Baldur's Gate. And our campaign to control the city's undesirables continues. We will need all of our strength. I always have strength enough for you. Do not make me wait long. We will spend the rest of our lives together. Go, be with the others. <laughs> of course. On this occasion, you need not even earn it, my sweet. months since the netherbrain fell, you have often doubted the decisions that led you to the depths of the Underdark. Here, there is little comfort. There is only conflict, danger, and war against impossible odds. But there is also joy, even though your camps are haunted by scuttling spiders and loth-sworn soldiers, when you lie with Minthara, you feel like you could tear down the world, and you are building an army of your own. The outcasts, the exiles, and the rebels flock to your cause. Now you must leave them for a brief while and return to the surface, for you have received an invitation to meet with friends and allies once more. Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more. Thou shouldst take care to preserve it. It is a great weapon wielded in the hand of good. Go. Know one another once more. Yes, my love. Are you done talking to your friends? Can we leave? I have hosted gatherings of house matrons and high priestesses who wanted nothing more than to murder one another before the night was done. I have negotiated the handover of hostages and smiled politely while sensing a dagger at my back. I thought I was equal to anything. But this is also pleasant. And I am not even sure anyone here likes me. Then they are fools. You are the best of them. Or I would not have chosen you. Ha! 
<laughs> what makes me so? My quick wit, my cold heart, my cutting insights. In truth, I have never enjoyed parties. Although they do present the perfect opportunity for a poisoning. You assume I am joking? Excellent. Taste my lips. They are already laced with toxins. None shall be spared tonight, not even you. Of course not. I was simply playing my part and trying to have a little fun. Now go. Mingle, carouse, indulge. Tomorrow we return to the Underdark, and our campaign against my house continues. We will need all of our strength. I know. We will spend the rest of our lives together. Go, be with the others. <laughs> of course, on this occasion, you need not even earn it, my sweet. Exquisite. You wish to consult me? It means love. It is not a word I ever expected to say. I have had many lovers, but none ever earned my trust and affection as you have. <laughs> Alel Srim is a noun. It is not a word I ever expected to say. I have had many lovers, but none ever earned my trust and affection as you have. Then cast that word from your thoughts and never think of it again. It should be easy enough, given how much escapes that mind of yours. <laughs>